Rosha at Mehmet Seven. Yeah, are you Professor. Ready? Okay. Then. Yeah, we are here. Okay, then your turn. You can begin now. Sure. I will share a file right now. And um, in the file, uh, because it had the video, we included the videos in it. Uh, it said that the, the, the file was too big. So in this slide that I'm sharing, I deleted the video uh, parts and I will show it in just video player. But in the one that we uploaded, it has. So, um, uh, I hope my man is also here. Can you? I'm here, sir. Uh huh. Okay. I'm here. So, our project was basically uh, an obstacle avoiding robot car. We wanted to make a robot car uh, that can. Uh, detect the objects in front of it, and it can find a way, a path, that it can uh, follow uh, a, a free path without any uh, object and obstacles. Well, this is the robot that we made, the picture of it. And uh, in this slide, we basically will talk about the, the things that our robot can do and the components we use. Uh, the produce, uh, produce circuit that we designed, and we will explain the codes, and I will show the videos later, but we also had some limitations that we really want to mention about it. And yeah, well, basically, uh, the, the light is really, uh, okay. I don't know why it's yes, yeah, this but much you know, cannot, uh, we cannot read the top of your. I don't know why it's this much. I will show you. You know, during the presentation, you have to pay attention about the colors too. Uh, if uh, yeah, everything is fine. Can read then it is not an effective presentation. Sure. Uh, instead, I will share my screen right now. Because, because here the colors were completely fine. So I hope you can see the whole screen. Uh, can anyone see the screen or not? Not yet. We can't see right now. Uh, can you share your share your screen, maybe? Uh, I will try to share my screen, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, okay, mine, mine is ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Sorry for that, we will continue. Um, this is basically, these are the objectives uh, that we had uh, for the project. At first, we had, we want to avoid the obstacles that there are on the way uh, in front of the robot car. Uh, basically, the robot car uh, is able to uh, detect the objects that are in 30, 30 centimeters, and it will warn the user uh, so that uh, there is an object, be aware of it. And when the object is in 20 centimeters, it will stop moving and it will move a little bit backward. Then after that, um, it will check the surrounding to see if there's any other obstacle and it, it will find a new path. And you can say any other details, Mehmet, about it. Um, yeah, um, with sensor and the smooth algorithm car can uh, car can avoid the accidents and it can, it can uh, find a way you know in these technologies in today's technologies there is a lots of project like this like uh, avoiding accident for avoiding accident uh, this kind of uh, smart technologies can prevent 
the accidents and uh, finding the ways. You can continue again. I will. Yeah, sure. So uh, now the components that we use are basically, you know, our demo on a board we had, which uh, we connected the pins of the other elements and um, to it. And uh, we also deployed the code and it gives a power supply. It's basically working as a power supply as well. Uh, the other thing that we used um, was motor driver L298N which we can control the motor DC motors with it as, as for um, controlling the wheels of the robot. Another thing that we used was ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensor basically with trigger pin uh, sends sound waves to the front of it with these ones, these two circles. And the echo pin uh, will basically get back the feedback and reflected um, of those waves, and it can determine the distance of the object that is in front of it, the distance that it has. You can continue. Uh, these components we uh, used for project. Uh, we use nine volt battery, two uh, nine volt batteries. One of them uh, supplies the Arduino. One of them the supplies the motors and DC motors we use for moving to control, also controlling the movement of the car and uh, using the Arduino Uno board and uh, deploying the our algorithm in it. Uh, Arduino Uno uh, controls motor driver and motor drivers controls the DC motors and servo motors is different. Uh, kind of motor because it has feedback system. Uh, you can uh, give a, give an angle as an input, and the servo motor can uh, turn uh, using the value you entered. And servo motor controls the um, sensor to see is there any obstacles or not. You can continue again. Yeah, so basically our servo motor, uh, as also Mehmet said, uh, the ultrasonic sensor is on top of the servo motor, uh, as we showed in the project. Uh, so it can the ultra, our sensor can uh, turn and rotate and see the other angles. The other components that we used were uh, our LED, buzzer, and switch. LEDs and buzzers are basically for indicating the warnings and uh, and the status of the car and if there's any object in it. And the switch that we use is basically for um, is basically for um, controlling the power of um, motors. And this is the Proteus circuit. Uh, the per, uh, we designed the circuit as well in Proteus. Well, um, in this circuit, at first we, we can see the motor driver and uh, the Arduino board. Uh, the motor driver, these are the DC motors that we have. We connected the DC motors to each other, the positive side to the negative, uh, uh, the positive si side of each other uh, to to each other basically, and the negative sides of each other together as well. Then we connected them to the output one and output two, the positive side and negative side of each. Because uh, with this in this way, we can control both of the DC motors. And also for this and uh, this side as well, uh, for controlling the wheels. These wheels are positive, uh, positive and negative to negative. We connected them and we connected it to the output three and output four. Here we had the nine volt battery that we uh, that we showed in the components. We connected it to the uh, positive twelve volt uh, pin, the positive side of it, and the negative side to the ground basically. And here's the thing: we have a VCC uh, five volt and a twelve volt. 
The thing is that in five volts, uh, we can't supply enough energy for the motors, uh, for the DC motors and the wheels. So, uh, and the 12 volt uh, input is the maximum voltage that the motor driver can accept. Then uh, we have enable A and enable B in our uh, motor driver. Enable A and enable B are uh, responsible for controlling the speed of motors, speed of wheels, we can say. And input one, input two, input three, and input four are basic. Uh, um, are basically for controlling the wheels as well. But we can control it to say if they they should be working or not. Uh, and it shouldn't be confused with the enables because enables are just for speed. So we connect the enables to our new board. And from the other side, we have the VCC of our ultrasonic sensor, which has um, we have, which has to be connected to uh, to five volts uh, and to the five volts of Arduino. But because the, we can't connect it here, then we just add it add it in the produce like this. And on the other side, the um, mm, Potentiometer has also a VCC that has to be connected to 5 volts. Then we have the echo pin, trigger pin, and ground pin. Echo and trigger are also connected to Arduino board, and the ground pin has to be connected to ground. And here we have a signal, a signal pin in uh, Servo motor. This is our servo motor. The signal pin is connected to A2, and the ground pin also is connected to ground. And these are the LEDs and the buzzers that we use. And we can say that uh, they are all connected to resistors, and all of them have a common ground, are connected to a common ground. Now, as for the codes, Mehmet can explain them. Uh, for codes, in first three lines, we can see the uh, libraries we used. Uh, we use server library, and the new thing, the new thing you see is uh, ultrasonic sensors uh, library. Uh, IO remote library, we were, at the beginning of the project, we were about to control car at the same time with a remote and receiver, but uh, our receiver wasn't uh that much powerful and it has it hasn't um have the it hasn't have the uh enough range so when range is not enough it can uh receive different values so we couldn't um we couldn't add it to the project the new pink sonar is um uh, 13 and 12 uh, is our pins to trigger pin and echo pin and 100 is our uh, limit to uh, limit to see the obstacle like 100 the centimeters is our limit sonic. yeah and the constant integers the all of the lines are which pins we used in Arduino Uno and the servo line is uh, Creating the servo, uh, name my servo to control the servo motor. You can go next. Yeah. In here, uh, we are setting up uh, our pins and our servo motors. Uh, some of the pins are output, some of uh, is input. For example, echo, piece, echo pin is input because echo pin gives the value of obstacle, how far the obstacle uh it it's uh, input and the others are output because we are giving them power we are supplying them or not uh, we are giving the data that's why they are output and echo pin is input because it gives our it gives us to data and we are initializing se uh, servo in 90 degree here 
we can continue. Yeah. <laughs> Here is a loop. In loop, we are using our methods, our um, functions here, and we are explaining the car, how car should behave uh, when it sees an uh, obstacle or something like that. Uh, in the first while loop, it's normal. It's our uh, default while loop because when there is no object in front of the car, it should go forward. That forward uh, is our function to make car go forward. The others, the other lines uh, are our pins because we wanted to test our algorithm with uh, uh, LEDs. Uh, the other ones are LEDs because when you want to test the algorithm with just car, car uh, doesn't stand to work so much. So we wanted to test our algorithm. We are in which state, we are in uh, which loop. We wanted to see them with LEDs. The second while loop is um, provides us a warning. Uh, when object is less than 30, it's still going forward, but uh, it's giving us with buzzer and uh, red LED, it gives us a warning, like there's an obstacle in front of me. After that, in if, in if condition, uh, when any object is close than 20 centimeters, uh, firstly, it should uh, turn on the yellow LED. After that, it should stop at the same time. After stopping, delay is delay is working for uh, waiting. Uh, 500 means uh, half uh, second. And after a half second, it should come backward and it should uh, wait again for coming backward half seconds and it should stop. And new direction function, we will see uh, the function. Uh, new direction function looks around and uh, define a new direction for the car. And we will because, explain it later. Yeah, because a uh, car should uh, find a new direction to go to escape the obstacle. After that, we have one more while loop. That while loop. Uh, make enable us to when car turns for new direction if there is still obstacle in front of the car it should uh, it should define a new direction again so it's uh, after the turn if there is still obstacle this this while loop uh, enable us to uh, find new direction again we can continue Uh, this yeah, is our, mm -hmm. yeah, if you want, you can continue, Russia. Yeah, okay. Uh, this this one is basically a simple function for uh, getting our uh, distance while using our servo motor, because at first we, uh, as he said, as Mehmet also said, we set the angle of servo motor at 90 degree and uh, in different angles, we check the distance. So basically, servo motor and uh, ultrasonic sensor should work at the same uh, together at the same time. And uh, sonar that ping a centimeter basically returns the distance in centimeters, and we can say that we return the distance. And uh, we can still continue if you want. Okay, uh, here we have new direction uh, function. In new direction function, we are checking uh, five different uh, way, uh, five different directions. And we are checking the distance of five different uh, directions with servo. We are giving the uh, angle values in check distance with servo function, and it checks five different uh, directions. After that, we are creating creating an array uh, to keep the values together and with a data uh, structure, because we will uh, make some calculations with these uh, values. In, in, for, uh, in first for loop, um, 
this is a simple uh, searching method. It search uh, array elements, and we have maximum uh, variable. It starts with zero. And if which direction is maximum, the maximum variable is that. So it can go that uh, direction. The other if statements, uh, trying to find which way is the maximum, which which way has maximum uh, what maximum distance. So distance. if yeah, if this if we find a distance a new distance which is maximum, it should turn right or left or it should uh, stay there. You can continue. Yeah. Uh, these are basically our simple functions for moving, uh, moving the uh, wheels and DC motors. We have a forward function, uh, backward, left, and right, and stop. In the forward function, we set uh, the uh, the wheels that are in the front as high, and the other ones as low, uh, and uh, which enables we make them, uh, we make and we set the speed of it. But for the backwards, we have to reverse this um, setting high and, uh, highs and lows so that we can move backward and still the speed is the same. For turning left and right, we have to um, make the left, either left or right wheels high or low. So basically for turning left, we have to turn on uh, we have to turn the right ones. Um, we have to uh, tur turn the right ones high and turn the left ones low so that we can turn left. And enable is still there. Uh, for turning right, we have to do the opposite. We have to turn. Uh, we have to make the left ones high and the right ones low so that it can turn right. And for stopping, we have to make all of them low and the speed is zero. But, uh, okay. But here also we had a problem because, uh, because, of, because of our battery, we couldn't change the speeds that much because, it, uh, because we're handling four different, um, the, uh, four different DC motors. So it has to give power, vol uh, voltage power to all of them. So turning the uh, so slowing them down was really a hard thing, and uh, we couldn't do it with nine volt battery. It needs twelve volt battery, and these are two of the videos. Can can you? I guess you can see that. See it right? Yes. We can. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, and basically it's checking left and right. And uh, as you can see, the ultrasonic sensor is working with servo motor and um, taking left and right to see which one has the uh, maximum distance and it can go in that direction. Sometimes it has difficulty in checking, but then it moves because of, uh, because of the general battery problem sometimes. This is also another one, and in this one, our uh, battery was basically really low. It was uh, our battery was dying, and as you can see, sometimes it's lagging. It might lag, but it's still finding its path, and it can uh, change the direction and move. And you can see it goes backward when it sees an object in front of it. And I want to say, sir, uh, these motors doesn't have so much quality. So when you are testing a bit and trying to take video, uh, motors can be broke. And at the beginning, it was motors were, uh, were working really correctly and good. But after a while, they become a little bit broke. So uh, turnings and going front is not so much good, the videos. But it's because of the generally um, because of the motors because we use them for testing and video and it's it, they are a little bit broken. Right ones uh, can still uh, work.
correctly, but left ones are broken. Yeah, after a while, it uh, basically just breaks. And yeah, it's that's it. These are our videos. But we are sure about and... the algorithm and uh, the other uh, components because we tested the algorithm and components. Algorithm yeah. can we... work correctly and smoothly. Yeah, we tested everything, everything works. Here at, at the first, though, we had uh, in, the, in our proposal, we were right, uh, we said that we want to make it a line following a robot uh, car. But because of the sensor that we had to um, find and uh, get, we, we couldn't do that. And as also Mehmet said, uh, we wanted to use the IR, uh, the remote control uh, with using infrared sensor. But uh, but the range of the signal was not sufficient enough for the infrared sensor to basically receive that, and uh, we couldn't basically in include it because the outputs would be different. And as I said, we also had a battery issue, uh, and it's I mean generally. Motor drive. This type of motor driver accepts 12 volt, volt battery, but uh, if we have two DC motors, nine volt is enough. But we had four DC motors, so it was also a little bit problem. And as we said uh, at the beginning of it, these motors can be used like in everywhere in all of the industries. Like we can see as the vacuums in the house, the robot vacuums in the house, and also we can see Mars rovers. They're all using these type of uh, algorithms and circuit designs. So uh, basically, we can say that these um, robots are helping us in our daily life as well, like in everything. And that was the presentation, but if there's any other question, we would like to answer and we would be happy. So thank you very much for the presentation. I appreciated your presentation. Really, you prepared Thanks. perfectly. And uh, this would be a good example for other people too, in my opinion. Uh, would you mind if I share uh, this uh, video uh, on YouTube. What do you think? No Mehmet problem. Yusha? For me. Mehmet? Mm, I'm, yeah, I'm no sorry. problem. No problem. But I wish uh, we could take them more properly. Our motors was broke. Motors were broke. Yeah. So, yeah, no problem. But you know, this is the first attempt, and uh, you uh, studied very well, and you are doing very uh, excellently, and I am. Very happy to have this type of the project, and uh, I wish all of you were in this uh, manner. And uh, this is a good project, and I hope the other uh, students will uh, pay attention about the presentation, and uh, this would be a good example for them too. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Applause to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. So uh, for today, it is enough. You know, uh, the time is uh, now. Yes, we are at the end of the class now. And the next, we, uh, next week, we will continue with the same uh, style. And you uh, will uh, submit some of you. I am not sure who will be ready for presenting uh, their projects, because we have more than 12, I think 12 or 13 groups. We have 12 groups and we have to complete uh, the presentations of the projects uh, until the end of the semester. And today we completed two projects. And uh, next week, uh, if you have more projects, you welcome. But it depends on the type of the projects. And uh, I want to have uh, detailed presentation, not just uh, showing us some uh, slides and then uh, without 
adding some values. This is important for me. So uh, before I uh, Hocam, close my yes, Hocam, uh, we also have uh, 20, uh, 30 minutes left. So uh, we are also set and we are ready to present our project. If if you don't mind, we can present it today because um, we did a real project to show to you. Cause we are all set and ready. Okay, Fatma Gil, if you are ready, then we can listen to you too. How many people are there for presenting presentation? Three. Three. Yeah. Okay, then your turn. You can continue now. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself first and you can mention about your university too and later uh, who will begin first? Fatma Gül, you? Uh, no, my teammate Selim will begin the uh, presentation first. Um, I also started. Oh, um, anyway, um, I'm Fatma Gül Bahraçık and uh, I'm a student at Maltepe University in Istanbul and um, we are computer science students and also electrical and electronics uh, engineering students. Um, I'm from also Sparta, if you ask, you asked uh, us for uh, to mention it. So... Um, and let's introduce ourselves. Yeah, uh, our my teammates. Well. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Selim Gedikli, uh, and we all are from Malta University. Uh, and here is Mehmet Ali Başak, uh, computer science student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, electrical and electronics engineering uh, is coming from uh, Fatma Gül and me. Uh, we are double majors, actually. Uh, actually, my main branch is electrics and electronics engineering. I'm double majoring uh, software engineering. Uh, Fatma Gül is double majoring electrical and electronics engineering, uh, and that's it. It's great, you know, you get uh, two diplomas, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hope we will. <laughs> okay, congratulations. Um, thanks. Uh, can you make us presenter yes, so yes, that we I can am, share? I am doing that now, uh, Fatma Gül first. And also okay. Selim Gül, please. Uh, what is your name? Sorry. Selim Gedikli. Selim. Selim. Yes. yes. Selim Gedikli. And Mehmet? Mehmet Ali Başak. Mehmet Ali Başak. So uh, we prepared a setup. Uh, I joined uh, Blackboard uh, from my phone actually and we're going to use uh, its camera. Uh, and uh, for the presentation slides, we are going to use uh, the screen uh, from Fatma Gül's uh, session clients. So, uh, let's see. Can you see the screen now? Yes, we can see. Yeah, okay. And let's set up the camera as well actually and also let's do it later again hi everyone uh, for today we prepared a project called a propeller led pendulum clock uh, actually uh, there are some resources about uh, this project uh, ongoing uh, and it basically has a logic that um, stands for uh, a propeller like uh, material that is spinning uh, and let's attach to it uh, and you're gonna see in a second and the main objective of this project is to get a visual effect a hologram like effect of a clock uh, a wall clock uh, actually and uh, the main logic actually 
is basically made of uh, frequency change and our uh, eyes uh, that are uh, the effect of that frequency change. And we're, I'm going to explain it uh, also. We are going to explain it uh, later on these slides. So we uh, we try to make a brief uh, presentation uh, for you, uh, actually. Uh, so. Uh, we want to show the uh, real project uh, uh, by camera. And uh, when we get to the uh, description, uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, that is uh, the clock uh, running, basically. Uh, so I'm going to check the screen right now. Just a second. I think there is a problem with resolution. Let's check again. We'll but uh, still, we can we can read. Uh, don't worry about it. You can continue. Okay. <clears throat> on the right side, on the right project, uh, uh, right photo. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see uh, the PCB that is actually spinning, that is attached to a motor. Uh, that PCB is actually a line shaped, uh, and you're going to see just in a second when we show you. Uh, and uh, it is basically spinning uh, by a DC motor uh, to get this visual effect. Uh, and I personally like to call it as a hologram light. Uh, so uh, we are supplying this system by uh, 3.7. Uh, voltage, uh, nominal voltage battery, uh, and then it's converted to 5 volts internally on the Arduino Nano, which we used as our microcontroller. Uh, and that uh, is basically distributed to the LEDs and some sensors, uh, which I'm going to mention on the uh, circuit itself. So uh, when we check the uh, subject of uh, how uh, that uh, effect is actually made, uh, there are 19 LEDs uh, attached to a PCV, and that PCV is actually attached to a DC motor uh, that is independent of uh, together. And that DC motor is actually rotating, and we have a hole sensor, which uh, for those uh, who don't know what a hole sensor is, hole sensor basically is a, a sensor uh, which detects a magnetic uh, field uh near really near to itself so that uh, it basically uh, gets a pulse signal uh, and that we used uh, a magnet a neodymium magnet uh, really close to it so uh, the basically the system uh, depends on uh, the fact that uh, when the pcb is uh, completing one cycle uh, that pole sensor uh, gives a signal. So uh, please remember this because it really depends on this uh, concept. Uh, and like I said, uh, we are supplying uh, the system uh, by 5 volts, uh, basically, which uh, converted to 5 volts, finally. And uh, as components, uh, we use Arduino Nano. Uh, I'm going to just uh, mention the in, uh, important ones. Uh, we use some resistors and LEDs. And also, uh, we, use the, uh, we use the hole sensor, uh, which is on the top left of those uh, projects. Uh, it's a really small sensor. Uh, we use the uh, switch, uh, slide switch, uh, a battery, some headers, uh, and so on. A DC motor is also important. So we also uh, were planning to uh, use an IR sensor uh, to uh, attach the uh, remote uh, so that we could, um, you know, uh, change clock, uh, clock time, actually change the time. And also, we were uh, planning to uh, do some mode changes, uh, but uh, due to uh, time constraints, we couldn't uh, complete it. Uh, but we are planning to. We are not going to uh, let this project just go. We are uh, going to uh, make some updates. And also, uh, I think component-wise, that's it, uh, basically. As for the circuit, this is the draft circuit. 
which is, I think, uh, pretty easy. Uh, all of those A and D uh, parameter uh, lines are actually uh, our data lines, uh, which all are coming from Arduino, not to, coming from Arduino to our LEDs, uh, which Arduino will basically flush them so fast so that it will give us uh, that uh, effect when it's spinning. Uh, it will give us th uh, that constant effect. Uh, and also uh, those R, G, uh, Y and B lines are the uh, LEDs uh, colors, which you are going to see in a second uh, on the reel. Uh, we have IR sensor, which uh, unfortunately today uh, we don't, but we normally do in our circuits. We have a hole sensor and all VCC lines uh, in uh, voltage points are 5 volts, uh, which are in an equilibrium uh, together on the circuit. We have Arduino Nano, uh, and we also have an on-off circuit uh, for the battery, which uh, what we have here is a pull-down resistor just for safety uh, to our circuit. And here uh, we also draw it in uh, Proteus, uh, actually, uh, which is, I think, the same uh, circuit. And I'm going to continue. So what we have here uh, is uh, two videos. So uh, since our mobile phones, when they are shooting a video, since our mobile phones uh, have an effect called flickering effect uh, due to their uh, FPS, uh, frames per second, uh, and since our PCB is spinning uh, so fast, uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, really show you uh, via a camera right now. But what we have found uh, a solution is that we uh, shot a video and we made it uh, so fast so that uh, frames are actually stacked together. Uh, so I do, we did, did this to uh, you know, uh, lower that flickering effect. And on the left video, uh, titled Hyped, is actually that, and uh, I'm going to open the right video. Right video is the real-time video, but the left video is uh, basically uh, we uh, we uh, get that fast. Okay, so let's watch. As you can see, uh, when it's like uh, really making a. a making its uh, speed constant. Uh, you can see that flickering is very low. We are getting that hologram effect and the time is running. And the real time uh, video is actually this. But uh, you know there are some parts due to a flickering effect that we can't uh, really show you very comfortably. Uh, but like uh, you can see seconds, minutes, and hours here. And also we added some uh, real effects there as well. And that's it. Uh, and also we're going to show it here on the real time and we're going to show the PCB itself as well. Uh, but uh, this was the best thing that we could show you uh, via uh, cameras. Unfortunately, we are not face to face. Uh, so uh, that's it actually. And right uh, now, uh, Fatma Gil is going to uh, present you uh, the station. Uh, the place where we fit uh, that uh, PCB. And also we are gonna try to do a live uh, demo of this project. But first, please give us a, a minute so that we could arrange the camera. Okay, perfect. Magul, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, hocam. 
We're just uh, trying to set up the back uh, okay. rear camera of our am, phone. Yes, I am waiting now. Yeah. Yes, um, this is uh, our station. Can you help me, guys? Yeah, sure. Let's just... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Yeah. But, Michael, where are you now? Can you repeat again? Where are you now? Uh, we are at the school right now. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh -huh. Yeah. Our workspace here. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, we can do... this is uh, okay. This is our space. As you can see, and we can move it in front of it. Yeah. This is our station. We did this uh, by using. Um, photo box uh, according to the uh, size of our PCB board. Um, we use uh, copper uh, PCB board and uh, we soldered all the components on it. Uh, oh, sorry, and guys. I... We what? can't see anything. I'm really sorry, guys. No, we can't. Uh, I can see. Russia, we can see. Yeah, we can see on both on pipelines monitor, as yeah. well. Can you Russia, try we to can see. refresh? Yeah, F5. No, unfortunately, yes, I can't hide them. <laughs> okay. Uh, everyone can see. We can continue, I guess. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, you can. Sorry, sorry, you. guys. Yes. Okay. Um, this is our components that you see. It's a 3.7 uh, nominal voltage uh, battery that we use in here. This is our um, Arduino Nano and the LEDs, which are uh, 19 uh, LEDs there, uh, green, um, blue, yellow, and red. Um, as you can see, we have a switch in here, and this, let me open it. Yeah, and also let me plug in the um, adapter in here. I have plugged in another. We also have another switch in here to control the voltage, and also some weights on it so that um, the uh, blocks are a bit light, lighter, and uh, while it's turning, it uh, shakes the uh, our station, station on yeah, on photo block. So we use some weight. And let me open the switch. As you can see, yeah. final version of it. Yeah, great. Yeah, because of the frames that uh, camera doesn't allow us to show. And uh, it's the final version that we can show to you. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just shut it down. And also, uh, I want to mention a part uh, so that we are here. Uh, that's magnet 
uh, I mentioned to you is actually sitting right there, as you can see. And yeah, yeah. And uh, this is the whole sensor. That little black thing on the PCB is our whole sensor. And when that whole sensor basically it goes to the magnet, as you can see, uh, those are our LEDs. I think it will be a little closer, yeah. Those are our LEDs, uh, and that LEDs are flickering so fast so that uh, we are getting a visual uh, effect, uh, which basically uh, caused by our eyes. Uh, that are a uh, defect of this effect, uh, which is called flickering effect, actually. Uh, and uh, I think we mentioned in the class uh, previously, uh, but uh, since our eyes uh, cannot de detect an FPS value uh, more than uh, a certain point, uh, that uh, this system uses that uh, principle. And I actually wanted to mention it again uh, so that uh, we can uh, really we can really understand. So uh, we're going to uh, go uh, to the computer uh, just in a second. Mm -hmm. So sorry for the echo. And let's go from here. And uh, Mehmet Ali is now going to uh, show us uh, the code. Uh, but uh, he's going to mention uh, that uh, we're not going to explain all of the code. And he's going to mention. Uh, but I uh, also want to mention that uh, for the code for the uh, mounting the PCB soldering, uh, gathering electronic components. Uh, we all worked. Uh, we didn't work uh, individually. Uh, for example, Mehmet Ali uh, didn't work on the code itself only, uh, or uh, Fatma Gül or I didn't work on the soldier itself. Uh, we all tried to touch uh, all of the things uh, little by little. And this is the main, is the main target of our project. You know, not just uh, preparing a small part of the project, and uh, I appreciate that all of you are contributed to the development of the project. Yeah, thank yeah, you. thank you. And actually, this was a, a pretty big uh, learning experience for us uh, because I had an experience of uh, soldering uh, due to my intern uh, or like electronics due to my main branch. But uh, for example, Mehmet Ali or Fatma Gül uh, didn't have that many or I didn't have uh, that many uh, experience on another topic. So that we, uh, I can clearly say that we boosted uh, our, ourselves together uh, on those topics. Uh, so yeah, yeah and is, now I'm going to use the strategy. You know, this is very good strategy. When you uh, built your group, you thought about the project and you uh, thought about how can you get your knowledge together and create an excellent project really yeah. uh, I appreciate yeah thank you uh, so uh, I'm gonna yield uh, the computer to Mehmet Ali right now okay Mehmet Ali you are Hello. to you now yes sorry wait a minute can you see Yes, we can see the code now. Okay. Uh, first, at the code, uh, there is a variable for our project. Uh, so, as Selim mentioned, it, uh, our project depends on the whole sensor, uh, actually. Uh, that uh, values at the start uh, we select for uh, our uh, motor RPM value uh, actually I think it's hundreds uh, yeah it sounds like 100, 100, 100 rpm round per sec per second uh, here this uh, function at the start we have a, a constant value uh, and we 
select the port of, of port for our Arduino. Then uh, the program goes to loop and uh, starts timer. The timer uh, gonna count down uh, at the start and uh, the end. Then uh, for with timer our let's uh, values sets again at this uh, functions. Then this function uh, functions uh, ends and sets new values and goes start. At the per round, uh, gonna uh, show us which LED is uh, light, which is not light. Yeah, I think you need to mention the compiling thing as well, or like I can mention it. Uh, so uh, we had a, uh, actually we did uh, something so that uh, when we uh, did compile our code, um, and uh, we, you know, uploaded it to Arduino Nano. Uh, we actually forgot to uh, save the before compiled code, uh, pre-compiled code. So this code actually may uh, like look very strange since it uses some uh, memory values and uh, those weren't like this before. <laughs> but uh, we then fetched the uh, compiled code. Uh, actually not compiled uh, this is a, a bit uh, like odd uh, but we knew that uh, we uh, wouldn't have uh, so much time to uh, present all the codes because the code is very long uh, due to that uh, flicking effect uh, you know sits very tight uh, so if you want we can like uh, basically um, present uh, the uh, whole code in a, a pretty much uh, you know uh, organized way uh, but later because it will like take a lot of time and actually for those who are interested uh, th this code uh, like a pretty big part is uh, from uh, can be found online because uh, there are some people that uh, did this project as well and we actually uh, got uh, the visual effects uh, I don't know if you can remember or not, but uh, there was a, 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 an icon, a symbol uh, at the very bottom of the clock, which was like a spinning uh, or gliding, let me say, a right from right to left and from left to right. And for example, that visual effect uh, can be found online. Uh, and we just basically fetched those uh, effects, but uh, we didn't just wanted to use a library and uh, we just didn't want to you know uh, use those uh, ready to use functions and codes we uh, wanted to understand it pretty deep deeply uh, so uh, we presumed uh, from that point of perspective actually uh, uh, you, uh, I agree with you. you know uh, it is important to uh, gather information from another sources and combine them but uh, every time if you accept something from other people, you have to cite them. You have to give credit them. And uh, you already mentioned that uh, there are some uh, projects related to this subject, and but you added values to this project. This is important. And uh, uh, our aim is to uh, create uh, and during the creating of the project, if you are learning some uh, novelty and some new things then this is our aim and uh, we want to enhance our knowledge and we want to expand our uh, uh, information knowledge etc what uh, will be benefit of your skills in the future and really uh, when i gave this type of the projects to you i uh, uh, didn't realize whether some students could uh, get uh, uh, prepared well or not and uh, but after i saw these two projects i can say if the students want they can uh, create uh, and they can challenge uh, interesting project this is the uh, point what i am considering yeah thank you and actually you are the yes. one uh if we want to like uh, 
talk about uh, this topic, uh, the logic circuit design or microcontrollers. Uh, you're actually the one uh, who is uh, basically leading us uh, to that point as well by giving us those challenges. So uh, I actually, uh, we as a team, I can understand uh, they're nodding their head right now, my team. Uh, we as a team, uh, thank you again uh, for uh, that kind of opportunity thank as well. You. And we actually, this project was very fun because um, we just um, pre-talked uh, before this presentation with my team. Uh, and we were talking about like uh, how did the project go and uh, you know uh, what were the things uh, that need to be mentioned uh, and etc and uh, all of us agreed on a point that the best moment was uh, the moment that we uh, made uh, this project run and working uh, that moment we all were like very happy and i just wanted to mention that uh, as well so, so uh, with your permission, we have a, a pretty like a brief uh, to topic that we want to also mention, uh, which is uh, challenges that we experienced. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, I think the most difficult part was uh, that uh, attaching the DC motor and the plate because they need to be uh, separated, but they also need to be connected. Uh, so there were some, um, you know, uh, screws that uh, actually could do it. But since this is a uh, custom prototype card PCB, uh, those screws didn't work for us. So we actually used silicon. Uh, but uh, since a DC motor is a thing that gets, uh, you know, heated, silicon would melting and blah blah blah. So we actually uh, was that part was very uh, challenging. And also another thing that I can mention is soldering itself uh, because uh, we did a special soldering technique uh, called space soldering, which basically I can briefly explain it as um, soldering the wires, the jumper wires um, on a third dimension. Uh, so those wires are actually uh, going uh, perpendicular to the surface and then coming perpendicular to the surface let me say and that was like very challenging as well because uh, since the connector uh, pins are very close together uh, when you heat uh, a pin uh, the pin next to the pins next to that pin and their solder uh, was melting and so you are required to start again and again if you need, if you make a mistake and we did obviously um, but like we actually made it uh, and we uh, made it running and also some calculation and we had a, a problem with adapter type we burnt out a motor uh, and etc uh, those things are happened as well but just like as I mentioned uh, before we like had very much fun uh, while doing this project we were like going from one places to another and etc so uh, as, a as a brief conclusion, uh, I can say that uh, propeller LED pendulum clock, uh, this is the uh, name of the project, uh, which is using Arduino Nano as a, a microcontroller, uh, is a very uh, complex uh, project uh, that are using uh, several elements and uh, some clock mechanics and uh, some programming. Uh, but uh, as a final, this project makes an uh, hologram light effect uh, to uh, get that uh, clock effect uh, on a wall. Uh, and uh, that's it, actually. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, by the way, for listening to us. I I'm sorry if, if we made it uh, so long, the presentation. No, it, it uh, was very nice. It was very good. And, uh... Now, are there questions from the class? Do you have questions? OK, uh, then uh, would you mind if I upload your projects uh, into YouTube? Uh, it's fine Not for me. Not for me. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah. OK, because, okay. you know, the people sh uh, should uh, show you and this is a good credit for your future too, in my opinion. 
Thank yeah, you. Thank you. By the way, thanks, Klaus. I think there are several people people that made a positive feedback to us uh, that wow. made us very happy. I think. <laughs> thanks a lot, Klaus, as well. Yep. So, so thank you very much for presentations. Today we had three presentations, and uh, next week we will continue with the same uh, manner. And I hope there will be very interesting new projects. And have a nice uh, weekend and see you next week. Bye. Hocam, by the way, uh, uh, Emre Hoca has visited us and she said hi to you. Uh, she oh, wanted okay. me to tell you. Is, is, uh, is she there now or she left? No, not right now, but uh, uh -huh. just before the presentation, she visited us and I, said, I yeah. Is he Asaf Hoca? And I said, uh -huh. yes, okay, tell him that I said hi. Okay, basically. And, uh, tell, her, tell her that uh, you are preparing so excellent projects. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. See you. Okay. Bye. See you. Bye. Hoca.